Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Ship It and Sip It. I'm very happy to have a guest who is returning to the show, Konstantin Karyapin. He is my colleague who works in the business development team at Parallect, and I'm having Konstantin on the show today because next week he's going to be at Web Summit in Lisbon to meet with thousands and thousands of founders and investors and startup enthusiasts from around the world. Konstantin, how are you doing today? Hello, John. Uh, thanks for having me again at your show. It's a wonderful show. I'm doing great, actually. Very excited about this event because uh, like, it's going to be one of the biggest events in the whole world. Like, you know, uh, New York Times uh, or probably uh, Financial Times, they've mentioned that uh, this is the world's largest uh, tech conference. Awesome. Uh, it's going to be great to have a team from Parallax there this year. Uh, I just want to check, have you been there before? Uh, no, I've never been. Me personally, I've never been to Web Summit before. Uh, but some of my colleagues, they've been in Lisbon uh, at this very moment when the Web Summit was happening. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't manage to buy uh, tickets to this Web Summit last year, but they enjoyed a lot of side activities that were happening around it. And I guess uh, they met founders even at some places, not evident places where they didn't expect to meet, to meet anyone. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, Lisbon's not a super huge city. So when there's like, I don't know, 70,000 or 50,000, how many people are going to come there for Web Summit? You're going to meet founders sort of in every corner, I guess. Uh, so let's stick to Lisbon for a minute um, because you've been there for the last couple months off and on, uh, living and enjoying the, the Portuguese life. Um, what's the startup scene like there? Uh, share some of your impressions with us. Well, uh, yeah, it's uh, really going to be uh, three months uh, already uh, since I uh, came here to Portugal and live here in Lisbon. And uh, what I noticed that there are so many people keep arriving to Lisbon every single day. There are so many planes arriving like every, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes uh, and uh, they keep arriving. Uh, a lot of people coming here uh, from different countries, uh, not only from um, European, but also from the United States. Uh, some of them come here first time to travel to see what's going on here. And then they f just fall in love with this city, with the vibe of the city, with the surrounding, uh, with all of these uh, networks that they meet and may, may can, can uh, do here. And... Uh, yeah, they sometimes make a decision to come here to live for a long time. So uh, if to speak about tech uh, community, it also, um, I would also like to mention that not only tech uh, involved people come here, they come from different uh, business businesses, different places with different interests. But of course, if to speak about the uh, technologies itself, uh, I can say that uh, Portugal, for some reason becomes a kind of a second Sil Silicon Valley. Uh, we even have a, a bridge that looks uh, pretty similar to the one that they have in the uh, United States. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, so I guess what's it like for founders there? You mentioned that there's uh, a great network. Um, have you been to some smaller events already? Uh, what do you, what do you try and do? related to meeting new founders or other people that are into startups? Yeah, <clears throat> there are really a lot of uh, different events happening uh, in these tech uh, activities. Uh, they also have some local accelerators and uh, incubators, different programs to support uh, founders at the very beginning of their journey. Uh, for example, I was uh, participating in the pitch uh, event of uh, one of the local uh, accelerators. I was so surprised how people uh, well prepared when they pitched their own uh, startups uh, in front of the uh, like audience. It was uh, really, really great to see this. And uh, 
I guess that people here, they mostly have this uh, entrepreneurship uh, mindset. Uh, they also have some um, weekly or bi-weekly meetings of uh, expats coming here to Portugal. And it's like a mixture of different people, those who are involved in te technologies and those who work in different other uh, businesses and spheres. Uh, they all try to communicate with each other. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, different uh, other, as I mentioned, investments programs, uh, some different programs that are here to support uh, uh, locals and uh, those who come here to build their products here. And, you know, uh, we even have uh, a couple of colleagues at Parallel that also now building their products here in Portugal, and uh, they also plan in and thinking probably of applying to some of these accelerators in the future. Yeah, so uh, this is going to be some of uh, the local experiences and we can probably be able to elaborate on that from the first uh, hand, so to say. Awesome, that's great to hear. And I guess it's worth mentioning that uh, for anyone, not just founders, but anyone that's looking to try their hand at being a digital nomad, uh, Portugal is opening up a specific digital nomad visa. They've announced it. You can read about it on the wherever you get your news. Um, and it's open, I think, from October 30th. So that's something that really interests me as well. So we'll see. We'll see what the future holds in Portugal. I'm excited for it. So let's dive into Web Summit then. Uh, tell us a little bit about the team uh, from Parallax that's going to be there with you. Uh, yeah, we uh, this year we are going uh, three of us. Uh, that's gonna be uh, two Victorias from Parallax. Uh, one of them is uh, Victoria Barovska. The other one is Victoria Antonovich, and uh, that's gonna be me. Uh, but to be honest, I would say that there are much more people people involved uh, on the Parallax side that are helping us to get prepared to this uh, web summit that are going to be with us uh, like in their heads, in their hearts wh while we are there. Uh, yeah, Victoria, um, I can probably tell a little bit more about these two girls and about myself. Yeah, Victoria uh, Barovska, she joined Parallel a couple of years ago, like a project manager. Uh, now she has moved a little bit closer to BizDev uh, and closer to us. So she's now helping us in building partnerships with different uh, uh, third-party vendors, with different uh, experts in, in uh, some specific fields, uh, building the community that is supposed uh, that is supposed to help uh, founders to grow faster together with Parallax. Uh, Victoria Antonovich, she also joined Parallax a couple of years ago, like a designer, and uh, three months later she. Uh, uh, started uh, her uh, journey as a head of uh, design department, which is now around 16 people. And uh, she also works very, very close with uh, BizDev, with, uh, with us actually. Uh, so she, since she lives here also in Portugal, uh, it would be uh, like a pleasure for all of us uh, to have uh, Victoria with us. Uh, she can speak about like different things, not only about design, but uh, about like uh, uh, ideas, validations, uh, and different other stuff that is uh, like very, very related to any founder. And uh, that's gonna be me. I, I work at Parallel already almost five years, and uh, I I think it would be like worth mentioning uh, Kate Novoselova because uh, she was also supposed to come here, but uh, having some difficulties uh, getting visa, she cannot do it this time. But actually, she was here last year, and uh, she knows uh, how it works. Yeah, and so she also helps us uh, in getting prepared to this event, and uh, she will be with us not uh, physically but mentally and uh, in spirit. For sure. And it's worth mentioning, if you want to learn more about uh, Victoria and Victoria and Kate, 
Uh, I'll put links in the show notes. I had them on the show for interviews at various times, even as far back as last summer. But it's amazing to see uh, how they've grown with the company uh, in most cases and uh, the results that they're they're making along the way. Uh, Victoria Borowska, obviously you mentioned she's working with partnerships. Uh, now she's got new ones with the companies like Intercom and Notion and Twilio and SendGrid and all these amazing tools that startups need to um, launch with faster with with less money. So it's a great yeah. thing. Uh, so let me rewind a little bit to, I guess, uh, almost over a year ago. Uh, at the end of last year, when we were setting goals. At, at the yearly planning session, I talked with you for a short interview about the goals for the business development team. And you mentioned that going to events and bigger events was a higher priority for the team this year. Uh, can you explain a little bit behind, I guess, why that was a priority and uh, what you've learned so far at the events that you've been to? You know, uh, talking to different founders, uh, uh, I realized, um, and some of my colleagues as well, that uh, Parallax is quite a unique company. We are, di we are doing some things very different, and it's uh, admired by uh, many founders. So we decided that we haven't ever been to such events before. Uh, why shouldn't we go there and uh, try to build uh, meaningful relationships with different founders, tell them more about who we are, how we work, what we do, how we can build these meaningful relationships and benefit like all of us from that. Actually, cool. this uh, year, yeah, sorry, actually, it's a third uh, conference that we are attending. Uh, the first one uh, was in Tallinn in Estonia early this year. I was there. Uh, participating myself. That was my uh, first conference in my entire life. And the oh, second yeah. one was, <laughs> yeah. And this, the second one was in Berlin later uh, in summer. Uh, I was there together with Victoria Borowska. So uh, it was also very interesting to go there to see uh, uh, the mood of the people after the COVID uh, restrictions, uh, what's going on here uh, in these conferences, uh, what people go there, uh, what is their goals when they go to these kind of conferences, uh, just to understand uh, how we can fit and suit these uh, needs of these people, what we can propose, what we can suggest, how we can help them uh, to build, to grow, to become successful companies. Right. And I remember you shared after you went to Latitude 59 in Estonia, you wrote that you had been to uh, over 30 meetings in two days, which uh, sounds fun, but also very tiring. Um, what, what did you take away from that experience? You said it was you just said it was your first uh, conference. So uh, did was it too much? Was it crazy? Did it was it overwhelming or did you learn a lot from uh, that. Yeah, it was a little bit crazy because uh, since that was my first time, I didn't know how to approach it like properly. So this is why I just uh, settled a lot of meetings for myself. Each of them lasted like 15 minutes. And between these meetings, I had like a five to 10 minutes break. And uh, of course, you cannot finish meeting with someone you have a conversation if it exceeds these 15 minutes. So sometimes I, we couldn't even stop talking to each other uh, for 20, 25 minutes. So, and I had another meeting after that. So I was just like running to the other place uh, to meet uh, next founder, um, investor, expert, like different people. Yeah, and of course um, it, was, it was quite difficult, but um, you know, uh, at the very beginning, before coming uh, to the latitude, I was also a little bit uh, nervous, probably scared uh, because of the first time experience in my life. But, you know, uh, 
it's so easy to overcome all these uh, feelings in, inside of you because uh, all you need is just to start talking to someone. Then it goes by itself like a flow. You don't even have time to think that you're nervous. Uh, it all happens so naturally. And if to speak about like uh, outcomes that I have from the first uh, um, conference, I can say that uh, there are quite a lot of startups already having some products on the market, uh, having some traction, having pitch decks, uh, the goals that they have, most of them have uh, for themselves uh, are uh, selling of their products. So attracting more and more customers and clients. And uh, the second goal is uh, raising investments, of course, talking to some uh, funds, uh, private investors, uh, venture companies, etc. And uh, on the other hand, uh, there were quite a lot of uh, investors uh, from different uh, like spheres, like private investors, funds, and uh, all these uh, kind of guys. And they were also looking for companies uh, for their portfolio. Um, but you know, uh, 15 minutes uh, speech is not enough, of course. So this kind of uh, meetings, they just get to know each other a little bit better, just to see uh, each other in real life. And then uh, the most of the work happens after these events. Uh, you, you, you finish this event, you go home, and you have so much homework uh, to do, uh, to outreach them, to follow up, uh, just to remind about yourself, probably uh, to pin someone to send you something that we, you agreed about, uh, maybe making some additional calls to dive deeper into some details and understand how you can help them. Yeah. Uh, so these are two, two main types of um, participants on this type of events. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you've learned a lot so far, and, and I'm sure you're going to take um, some of those insights into the Web Summit experience. And I wanted to ask just real quick before we get into the plan for Web Summit itself, uh, if you have any advice for people that might be nervous about going to these uh, types of big conferences. You know, I, I myself am pretty introverted in settings like these, I don't mind speaking in front of public or speaking on a stage or, or giving a presentation. I get nervous, obviously, but it's fun for me. But in these types of conference situations where you just sort of have to mingle and, and strike up conversations, they're not my favorite sort of uh, place to be at. Uh, so if there's a founder who maybe feels the same way, uh, what advice would you give to them to sort of feel comfortable and get the most out of sort of that conference environment? Uh, you know, I already uh, in contact with the, quite a lot of uh, founders that are planning to go there. And for most of them, like for a lot of them, it's also a first time experience. Uh, they feel a, a little bit nervous. And uh, what I usually say is that uh, you don't have to be nervous because uh, we are all humans. We may have this kind of feelings, but it doesn't mean that uh, you should you should feel this way. Because everyone who goes there, they uh, come to build these connections. They come to talk to you. They uh, also um, experience maybe the same feelings about it. Uh, but once you start, especially you know, keeping in mind a lot of these side activities, uh, night summits, uh, after summit meetings and events where people just get drinks, uh, laugh together, discuss not only work, but also, I don't know, um, their lives, uh, their goals and uh, dreams. It all, it all helps to set up uh, mm, this kind of uh, internal mm, communication that allows you to stop feeling yourself nervous. So don't be afraid of that. I would say uh, to these kind of founders, uh, it will all disappear like in several minutes once you start uh, and dive into this atmosphere. Yeah, super. It sounds like it's going to be fun. And yeah, that's great advice uh, for anybody that's going. So uh, you mentioned the team that will be there from our side. 
Victoria yourself and the, the second Victoria. Uh, how have you guys sort of divvied up goals? Uh, what what does the team approach look like? What are some of the high priority things that you'd like to to get out of Web Summit this year? Uh, yeah, great question. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, of course, uh, one of the goals is building uh, long lasting partnerships. Like, uh, you know it uh, perfectly that Parallax is uh, the company that is not looking for uh, short term connections, right? So we, uh, it is really important for us because uh, Building anything meaningful, it's not an overnight miracle. You have to devote yourself. You have to invest a lot of time, money, uh, and uh, different other resources. So for us, it means that uh, we are looking for these type of partners and uh, founders that are also interested in these long-lasting relationships. Uh, we are now not just a company that uh, may help only on the uh, side of building some technologies we also building this community of different experts of different uh investments um, organizations uh we also build our uh, expertise in marketing uh, because we understand that uh it all means quite a lot to any founder when he may come to any company and get all of the things uh inside of uh, one uh, connection. On the other hand, uh, we have a goal of keep building partnerships with uh, different type of experts. Um, like, for example, this could be product management, this could be uh, investments, uh, other related spheres. And uh, partners um, like from investment side, because uh, any founder that works with us, especially when we start investing uh, ourselves in these startups, uh, it means a lot of for us to help these guys uh, raise investments as soon as they can. So uh, we are not just say some founder that here is your product, go and do whatever you can do. We want to help them to raise investments with the help of, of Parallax, and for that. We one of the goal is building these kind of relationships with and partnerships with uh, investors as, as well. And of course, um, it would be nice to go and meet people in life in real life uh, and uh, talk uh, about Parallax, about the way we work, or what we're doing, how we do. I guess uh, a lot of people would be inspired, and um, we will definitely meet a lot of uh, interesting. Uh, connections there for sure and i guess uh, to stick with the partnership angle for a little bit uh victoria barovskaya as we mentioned is working specifically on that uh within the business development team um i guess can you give us an overview of the goal for for that and for her uh, work and in general, but also at uh, Web Summit. Why is it so important and valuable for founders that Parallax has these partnerships in line? Uh, what um, Victoria works recently, in particularly, uh, was uh, kind of partnerships with third-party uh, vendors. Like these type of services usually being used for any startups at the very beginning when you don't build anything custom, but just use these third type, uh, third uh, party services uh, to build faster and to build cheaper. Uh, so she was working uh, particularly on uh, this part of investments. And uh, it is really important for us because uh, uh, we managed to get uh, quite a lot of uh, so to say discounts and special uh, offers from these type of companies, allowing any founder at the very beginning of their journey to save up to $30,000 uh, when they build these products. Uh, it's not a secret that money uh, counts and uh, everyone, every uh, founder is looking for some kind of savings. So this 
type of savings uh, would allow them probably to, if they have this amount of money, to put it into the development, into marketing, into sales, something that will bootstrap their uh, projects to the market. And uh, the second type of uh, partnership uh, relationship is uh, are those that I've mentioned uh, with investors, with different uh, experts. This also means a lot because uh, we want um, serial entrepreneurs, uh, very experienced uh, people in their own specific fields to come and help uh, our founders uh, to make as less mistakes as possible at the very beginning, to go to the market as soon as possible and finally raise investments because uh, this is one of the uh, final goals for any startups. Otherwise, uh, you will just die. So this all uh, is being done only just to help founders uh, to build, to grow and to become successful as soon as possible. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, at the same time, Victoria, uh, the, the former head of design will be joining you. And I guess design is very important at any stage, but uh, what are some of the key value adds that she brings to the team? And what is maybe she expecting to find at uh, Web Summit? Uh, well, actually, she has uh, almost the same goal like uh, we all do, uh, we all have. And uh, like having uh, deep expertise in design allows her just to meet founders that probably don't know how design uh, is important for any uh, startup, just to give them kind of uh, maybe explanations, some hints, uh, also to get acquainted with these kind of uh, founders. And uh, recently, we have been working at Parallax on the uh, some um, idea validation frameworks, and one of them concerns design itself. So Victoria is working on one of the um, programs. Uh, I guess she's going to uh, announce it pretty soon. Maybe a, a Web Summit would be the first place where she will start pitching this kind of program. And actually, this program allows um, in a very short time frame uh, to, to get your idea validated through designs. Um, so um, it is uh, really, really good to have uh, people from different kind of uh, spheres at Parallax. So for example, uh, Victoria uh, Barowska, she has vast experience uh, managing uh, project teams. Uh, she was also helping uh, with the business analysis on different projects. She was also helping uh, validating startups when we had the uh, accelerator program uh, op opening. Uh, so she knows quite a lot about the pitch decks, uh, about the uh, business analysis, uh, about uh, some things about investments. So she's gonna cover these kind of topics uh, along with uh, different things. Uh, Victoria Antonovich, uh, she's mostly experienced in design, so she will be covering, I guess, mostly this part of uh, topics and uh, communications. And uh, yeah, and uh, I, I try to cover a little bit of a lot of this, uh, all of this. <laughs> so um, this will be quite a diverse uh, team on our end uh, this time. It's not going to be only me or me and Victoria that's going to be like different people with different expertise. Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys have a dream team that's going there. And I look forward to uh, following what happens, seeing the results and also seeing, you know, Instagram stories and cool videos and all the great news that you guys bring back from Web Summit. Uh, but it would be a little bit, I guess, short-sighted to not mention that the tech market or the startup market and investment market is in a bit of a rough patch right now. There are various reports showing that, uh, you know, investments at all levels are down. We're down uh, very low through quarter three and quarter two. So uh, do you think it will, like, everybody's going to be in a bad mood at Web Summit? Or how do you think people will act? I don't think so at all. Uh... 
probably because I've already seen it in, uh, in Berlin, in uh, Estonia. Uh, people are all very uh, full of hope. And, uh, you know, there are quite a lot of uh, investors as well participating in this type of uh, conferences, which means that they have money and they are looking for some, uh, I don't know, maybe outstanding pro pro products uh, and projects uh, to invest in. So people are not like uh, having bad mood uh, for sure. Uh, for some of them, it's uh, one of the events uh, that allows people to meet and build new connections. Uh, so in my, in my uh, like experience of participating in this type of events, people are still uh, in a good mood. Uh, people are trying to find the ways to make their products much better to attract uh, interest of uh, investors and investors um, making decisions they become in my understanding more uh, probably conscious i would say they now try to dive much more deeper into these uh, startups into metrics they have into founders and validate it uh, on a more deeper level before making decisions to invest so this is something that is just changing uh, the scene of uh, investments of the startup world in my understanding, and uh, it will definitely be a kind of a new solution, I guess, for startups. They will find out uh, through these kind of uh, meetings and connections uh, what kind of startups they should become to be attractive to investors in the future. Yeah, well, I think everybody will be positive, as you said, I'm sure. I mean, uh, Lisbon looks like a beautiful place to spend some time. And with so many like-minded people and so much, uh, I guess, money from investors flowing around, it should be all right. 